You may remember a couple of weeks ago I put on my Twitter page where I could go in Ireland to learn more about the breeding industry. Well, I made it. I'm currently here in the west of Ireland where my trip finishes. But I've vlogged the whole journey, so stay tuned and you'll find out exactly what I got up to. Stay. Look. Stay. Good boys. Whilst doing my intro, trying to keep it all professional, we got interrupted by cows. Hello cows. Stay. Yeah? Go on. You stay. Go on. Good boys. Listen, keep going. Keep I'm, going I made way. some friends in Ireland. My friends find <laughs> stay, moo cows. Good boys. These are my <laughs> These are my friends. One's having a wee. So one thing I found really interesting, apart from the lovely wind is the limestone. So at home, where I'm from, you always have a lot of Cotswold stone, which is beige. Whereas here, it's this lovely grey colour. If you take a look behind me, this would be a very good show, actually, for uh, selling limestone. But look how beautiful it is. And then if you look further down the land, all the fields are sectioned off, but they're a lot smaller than they are at home. Beautiful. Here, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> So we got to the airport nice and early for our half past six flight. Brian, my boyfriend who came with me, wasn't as awake as I was, but nevertheless, we were both very excited. Where are you going? Gorgeous views in the air there. A nice peaceful flight only took just over an hour and we napped the whole way. Then when we landed, we went to pick up the car. It did take a little bit longer than we thought it would. And then in typical Brian style, we had to go around and take a picture of every inch of the car so that we wouldn't get charged for it in case there were any scratches. Are you happy? Yeah, more of it. So he's giving me a full on tour of the Irish roads. And he's really happy about it. Yeah. And I've never heard so many swear words in my life. Um, our first destination of the morning um, after we've just picked up the car. Um, what did you do that? You go, what did just pick up the car? Can you do that? You pronounce words like that. We've had two hours sleep. You had more. I had two and a half hours. You had two, but we slept on the plane. <laughs> Okay, so it was very exciting because we were heading to Cornwall Stud, especially excited to see the newly added St. Mark's Basilica, the highest rated horse in the world in 2021 as a three-year-old. As Aidan O'Brien said that St. Mark's Basilica is possibly the best horse he's ever had in Ballydoyle. Look at him, absolutely glowing in the sunshine. What a privilege. Then we had the opportunity to see Camelot. Now, I'm pretty sure this is Wooden Bassett. It's very hard when they have no markings, but I'm pretty sure it is. I was able to have a quick pat with Australia, who was stood there very calmly in the sunshine. And then we saw Sotsas, who was the 2020 ARC winner, who showed us that incredible turn of foot. Sotsas also defeated multiple grade one winner Persian King in the French Derby in record time. European champion two-year-old and dual classic winning Myla by Galileo, Churchill. And then with the one white sock, we see Saxon Warrior, who was the winner of the 2000 Guineas in 2018. It was such an honour to visit the stallions at Coolmore Stud. Not only were these big powerful machines in immaculate condition, but also the grounds at Coolmore, from the statues to the gardens. It was amazing and the weather was definitely on our side. So we then went to grab some lunch. Oh, that's me in slow motion. Brian was just getting to grips with the camera and its setting. We had some lovely food at lunchtime. Brian really doesn't like salad, so he gave most of it to me. Anyway, over to me in the car park. So we've just come back from being at Cornwall. It was absolutely amazing. We were able to see some of the stallions as well. We've just had some lunch. We're gonna move on to the next spot and then later we're gonna head to Punchestown. Uh, and now we are on the way, we're going up north. Going north to no. Which way are we going? We don't start going direction. We've seen the stands at Coolmore. It was amazing, and now we're going to Punchestown. You, you want to be careful because no offense, babe. Yeah. But when it comes to being sharp for speed cameras, yeah, I'm the man for that. 
will come to getting speeding tickets, you've got two in one year. Yep, he's not lying. Anyway, to Punchestown for my first ever trip there. It was lovely to see lots of crowds. It was actually a really relaxing environment and everyone seemed to be having a great time. I was designated driver, so Brian got himself a pint of Guinness and we made it just in time to watch the Punchestown Gold Cup. I was really excited to see Alaho in action and I remembered to get a clip of his finish. So that was the end of the first day. I was so tired by the end of it, but we had a good night's sleep ready for the next day, which again was filled with some exciting things. We were at Newtown Studs, so we got to nosy around in the morning at the Mares and Foals, peacefully grazing in the field. And then later on, we headed to the Irish National Stud. But before we headed there, we were kindly given a very special tour by Freya the dog. So it was then time to meet Caroline who was going to tell me a little bit more about what happens here at Newtown Stud and we were joined by some gorgeous friends in the field. Oh, look at them go. Oh, they love it. So I'm joined by Caroline. Caroline, thank you so much for letting me chat to you. I have so many questions, but I'm going to try and reel them into about five. Um, I'll try and answer them. Firstly, <laughs> congratulations on your award. Just thank tell you. me quickly about that. Yeah, yeah. No, I was nominated last year for the Godolphin um, Leadership Award for the stable staff. Um, they do this brilliant awards every year and people get nominated, you know, by their bosses. And it covers like racing, breeding, all aspects of the industry. And yeah, no, it was a great honour and I was absolutely delighted that, and didn't expect to win, but was delighted that I did. Yeah, so that was wonderful. Yeah, it was really, really good. So, so I, like I said, I'm going to try not to say too many questions, <laughs> but first, can you just give me a brief rundown of what happens at the farm? Yeah, so this is a breeding farm. Yeah, so we, at the minute, we're in the middle of breeding season, so it's crazy busy and lots of foals been born. And yeah, basically, like they're here to fall down and then they're here to get back and forth. So we breed them back to the stallions to get them back and forth. So we start falling in like January and usually fi finish about the middle of May. And then we'd finish covering the mares the end of May. So yeah, the whole aim is to, you know, have the babies born and then get the mares back and forth so they can have foals again next year. Yeah. So and we yeah. have some in the background. Yes, this is a baby. He was born about three weeks ago. So this mare now, she'll be for cover hopefully now in another week or so. Um, so we'll start teasing her um, in next week now and hopefully she'll be for cover soon. So yeah, yeah. But it's a lovely stage, like the yeah. first couple of weeks. They, they grow and they develop and they get little personalities, you yeah. know. And yeah, they're yeah. So and they're so inquisitive. Real, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're real playful, yeah. So for the first couple of weeks, we keep them in smaller paddocks by themselves just yeah. to let the folds get a little bit stronger. And even in the very beginning, we'd only let them out for 20 minutes, half an hour, just to give them a chance. Yeah. And then by the time they're a month old, then they'll graduate to one of the bigger fields where they're, uh, yeah, they, they'll start playing and be a bit more friendly. And yeah, yeah. So it's so very cool. in these paddocks, are they more or less at the same stage? Do you yeah. Them... You try and keep them, yeah, at the same age. So these would all at least be a month old because at least, you know, they're a little bit stronger. Yeah, yeah. 
But it's very funny because the first few days, like, they'll be scared of each other. And then like, oh. after a few days, they'll be playing together and then they're all buddies. But, yeah, we try and keep, keep them as much as we can, you know, at the same age. So yeah. at least they're, they're strong enough. And how long uh, after they've been born can you let them go out? I normally wouldn't let them out for the first day or so. It yeah. really does depend on the foal. Some of the foals like a little bit weaker on their limbs, so you mightn't let them out for, you know, three or four days. And if you do, it'd be very short burst. Yeah. You know, it might be only 15, 20 minutes. Right. So it just gives it. their... Yeah, it's more for their limbs, just to give their limbs a chance. Because some of them uh, can be quite weak on their limbs. Would, so if it's a, the ground's harder, yeah, just watch it, that as well. Yeah. Now, normally, this time of year the ground wouldn't be this hard you right. know it's we haven't had a lot of rain yeah. so it's normally could be muck it's more <laughs> that it might be too soft but yeah it seems the springs seem to be getting drier here but we have like all weather paddocks that we can let them out yeah so it's a wood chip right so even if you had something that you didn't want in a bigger field on hard ground you can let them out there for 20 minutes oh. and it's a really nice soft surface yeah so you know it's it's easier on them and their limbs yeah. And it's good for the mares as well, just to get out for a little walk after they mm. fold. The mares are usually happy to stay in for the first few days just to get a little rest and that. And then they like to be out and have a little pick. So, yeah, no, it's good. So just taking it back before the foals are even born, Yeah. after they've been covered, you have to check them and things like that. How? Yeah. What's the process with their checks and veterinary checks? So our vet comes in every day and we'll tease the mares. And then the teaser, he gives us a good indication of when the mares in season. And then our vet will scan them. And then when they have a good enough follicle, we'll ring the stallion man and say, look, can we book her in for whenever the vet tells us would be you know, the best time to cover her? So she'll be brought over, she'll be covered... Um, two days later, we'll check her for ovulation. And then usually about 15, 16 days after that, you can tell if she's in full or not. So, oh. yeah, so it's very, really cool. So, like, yeah. the vet will scan. Like, we'll tease her as well a few days before that, and you'll know, you know, if she's not breaking that, okay, there's mm. a good chance she might be in full. And then the vet will scan her, and there'll be this beautiful little perfect black circle, and that's your pregnancy. Wow. Yeah, so they're the ones we really want to see. So we'll scan her at eight, uh, 16 days, 18 days, 21 days. And they usually do the 18 and 21 days because sometimes there could be a second pregnancy there. So you really only want the one. So if there's twins, well, then you might have to pinch one So because you really only want them having yeah. one pregnancy. And then by 28 days, then you will see a heartbeat, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really deadly. And then 42 days, and then our last scan is usually 60 days. So they're well in full by then. Yeah. Wow. So all going perfectly it's that simple yeah. but <laughs> it's, it's really amazing as well so you have your tea room where you watch them at night don't you just to yeah check that yeah everything when they're going into the folding process what signs do they give before they're about to drop yeah well we'll know their dates so we'll have their dates so it's usually you know 11 months yeah. and maybe a couple of days and so we'll start watching them like some years the maiden mares are the hardest to tell the ones having the first folds because they might only have like a little bag or only a small bit of a bag so normally the older mares you'll be able to tell you know they'll have a good bag they'll drop down on their quarters even their belly they'll drop down yeah. um, and even watching them they'll be a bit more uneasy and a bit more restless and most mares like are really really good they will give you loads of sight they'll sweat up they'll walk they'll be very very unsettled and yep. then you'll know yourself that they're going to fall. The maiden mares it's harder because you don't have a history on them and right. some of them can fall a bit early they can fall like two weeks early yep. you know what I mean so you have to be ready so you have to be constantly watch them mm. but um, yeah we're very lucky we have people that do nights so yep. they start watching them from 8pm in the evening and they watch them through the night till 7am and then once one starts falling they'll ring one of the lads on call and they'll come down and fold the mares wow. and usually it's like it's really straightforward and the mares are brilliant like the like nature is just unbelievable because like you'll have a maiden mare and you'll be like oh my god she won't have a clue and within five minutes like she knows exactly what she's doing yeah. and once the fold stands up she'll position herself that the fold can nurse and yeah no like it's it is it's unbelievable yeah. how uh how nature works and so. you've got your foster mare as well haven't you in case the yeah yeah well that's it. it yeah yeah like some mares don't like to rear their foals yeah. uh, unfortunately <laughs> uh, and then unfortunately if you do lose one that you'll have to foster and yeah. like the foster mares are they're ridiculously good like they're so so like they'll take to the foals straight away yeah yeah, yeah and treat them like their own like so yeah oh it's unbelievable yeah 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 and the foals don't care they're like 
my new mammy and they're yeah, happy yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And they're happy well yeah. brilliant thank yeah. you so much it's been wonderful looking at them all and especially when they go galloping around I know. This week with a big bambi legs yeah i know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they're adorable thank you so much no problem <laughs>
well. Um, but it, the farm is, you know, it's a, it's a huge farm. Um, people, when they come here, can explore the entire farm and meet all of the different horses that are here. So not just the living legends, but our stallions, our mares and foals. So this is probably the, the best time of year to visit because it's when we're welcoming all of our newborn foals. The farm is covered in beautiful pink from the cherry blossoms. Um, so it's a lovely time to visit. Yeah, and you also have your, your new horse racing experience, don't you? Yes, so the Irish Racehorse That's Experience. It. Yeah, so that opened, um, in, it was supposed to open in 2019, but got delayed with everything that was happening in the world. Uh, but it's finally open for people to come and enjoy. So that's an extra five euro per person um, if you want to experience that. But in this experience, you're learning the full life cycle of the thoroughbred. And you actually get to become the owner, the trainer and the jockey. So you'll receive a tablet when you go in. Um, you'll go to Goffs to buy your first wow. racehorse. You'll get to name it, pick your jockey silks. Um, and every decision you make leads to your horse winning or losing the race. Yeah. You also get to become the jockey. So you'll actually get to sit on your horse the, and the ride on the race. Well. The real experience. Yeah. As I said, the full uh, life cycle of the thoroughbred because here at the farm we're all about the mares and foals and then retired racehorses that start their breeding career. So we needed to have something that kind of tells what happens in between. So that's what yeah. as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So to conclude our trip in Ireland, we got a bus from Dublin all the way to Galway to see Brian's parents. I learned a lot about breeding in my time in Ireland and I got to see horses at the beginning of their lives, staying in the pastures with their mums, all the way to seeing the legends that live at the Irish National Stud. For the rest of our trip, I got to see the beautiful west of Ireland, the lovely limestone that surrounds the countryside, visiting lots of local animals, meeting some friendly sheep, and I also met Harry, the local Connemara pony. So to conclude our trip in Ireland, we headed to Knock Airport to fly back to London. We had the most amazing trip in Ireland, and I cannot wait for the next.